this is Colonial Puppet, and today I'm going to be working on this Macintosh LC2. More specifically, I'm going to be hopefully fixing the logic board to this LC2, because while the computer does turn on and work, there is a strange noise coming from its speaker. And while I unfortunately didn't get any footage or audio of the computer in its original state, the 8-bit guy did a great LC2 restoration video where he more or less had the exact same problem that I had. And that problem is the the computer boots up just fine, but the sound from the speaker sounds like a kettle going off. And I'll let you give his video a listen to see what I mean. So needless to say, this is a relatively common issue with these LC computers, and it's caused by leaking capacitors on the logic board, which is an issue that plagues most of Apple's computers from the early and mid-90s. So with that bit of context out of the way, let's see if we can get this logic board working like new again. So right off the bat, you can see this logic board is pretty gross. Aside from losing their capacitance, these electrolytic capacitors tend to leak corrosive fluids onto the board, which can be damaging if not cleaned up. But before doing any cleaning, I first decided to remove these RAM sticks as well as these four ICs from the logic board. And unfortunately, I don't have any fancy chip puller at the moment, so I decided to coat this flat-tipped screwdriver in duct tape and use it to slowly pry either end of each of the chips. It's important to keep these chips as level as possible when removing them to avoid bending any of the legs. Then I used this dirty pair of pliers to slowly rock back and forth the electrolyt capacitors until they eventually broke free from the logic board. Keep in mind that while this does remove most of the capacitor from the board, it does leave behind the leads of the capacitor which are going to have to be removed later with some soldering. You're probably noticing that delicious looking powdery yellow substance that's left over on the board. I'm guessing that's dried electrolytic fluid from the capacitors that's hopefully going to be cleaned away once all of these caps are removed. Okay, so now that all the caps are removed, you can get a good look at how disgusting this board really is. And the first thing I'm going to do to clean up this mess is drop in some isopropyl alcohol and give the areas where the caps were a light scrubbing with a toothbrush. And I want to make a note that I'm scrubbing very gently with this brush. I even break out a cotton swab because I don't want to damage anything on the board. Specifically, the legs of the CPU are especially fragile and can bend or even break if you're too rough with a brush. After spot cleaning, with alcohol the areas of the board with the highest concentration of capacitors, I then move to my dishwasher to give the entire board a good cleaning. And while this may seem like a pretty sketchy method of cleaning electronics, the truth is it should be just fine if I let it properly dry afterwards. And after letting the board dry under a fan for almost an entire day, you can see that the board is looking a lot better. That yellow residue is completely gone, and I can now move on to removing the old capacitor leads with some soldering. 
And to do that, I first add some flux to the board, and then this soldering braid makes quick work of the old leads. And usually the leads stick to the soldering braid, but if it doesn't, I break out the tweezers to fully remove it from the board. And apart from removing the old capacitor leads, I also use the soldering braid to remove any old solder as well. And once all the old leads are gone and the pads are clear of any old solder, I use some alcohol and a q-tip to clean up any remaining flux. And as you can see, these pads are looking a lot better and they're ready for their new capacitors. And the new caps I'm going to be using are these tantalum capacitors I bought off of console5.com. They're not sponsoring me for this video, they just make really good cap kits for these Macintosh computers. And while these tantalum capacitors are a lot smaller to work with compared to the old tin can electrolytic capacitors that this computer started off with, I do find them a lot easier to work with. And to attach these new caps, I first load up one of the two pads with solder, and then I use a pair of tweezers to carefully get the cap into position position while reheating the pad with solder on it. And this locks the capacitor in place so I can then add solder to the second pad. And that's really all there is to it, so now to repeat this step for the rest of the capacitors. Okay, so after all of the new caps are attached, I give the board another cleaning in isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to remove any remaining flux. Once the IPA has done its job, I use a hairdryer to help evaporate any of the remaining alcohol. After which, this recap job is pretty much complete. The only thing left to do is reinsert the RAM sticks and the four chips. Then I give the board one last blast with some compressed air before reinserting it into the LC2 and reassembling the computer for testing.
Okay, and now for the moment of truth as to whether or not this was a successful recap job. I power on the computer, and right off the bat I hear the boot up chime, which is a good sign. And it seems like the speaker is no longer making the kettle noise from earlier. For some reason this monochromatic duck popped up while booting, which didn't happen the first time I powered on the computer, but I don't think it's a sign that there's anything wrong with it. And as you can see it booted up to the desktop without any issues, so I'm gonna have to call this recap job a success, and I hope you enjoyed this video. This is part one of what I hope to be a two-part series where I fully restore this LC2 computer. In part two I hope to cosmetically restore the computer as well as test out its floppy drive and install an ethernet card. So be on the lookout for that next episode, and as always this has been Colonial Puppet, have a great day.